Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report, and we have Harley Schlanger. And Harley, of course, you're in Europe uh, now, back in uh, in Austria. And there's lots of issues going on, a big push in Washington, D.C. to take out Geithner and, of course, his uh, accomplice in the White House, Obama, before the Democratic Convention. Tell us all the major issues that are cooking on the front and back burners now with the LaRouche Foundation. We really don't have a long window here either because no, the, uh, if their campaign starts against uh, Syria, we're probably going to have a regional civil war that will boil over to a war between Sunni and Shiite states. It will be a multinational war between Sunni and Shiite. That will absolutely pull in like hooks in the jaws uh, into Russia, which is half of its military is, is Muslim. It will pull Russia and China into this conflict. It will very quickly, it may be a matter of months or years, but it will very quickly develop into a global conflagration. So the very first effect will be if there's a Syrian war and Syria falls is that we're going to have the technical, if not actual, closure of the Strait of Hormuz, which means no oil out and three to $500 barrel oil and a crash, not a recession, but a full force, full cord press, they call it, code blue depression. And we're talking about well, major we're depression. We're really close to that right now with the collapse of the euro. The, the, the situation here, you see every day new headlines. Uh, economists uh, say, ask question whether euro will make it through August. They uh, are waiting for the German constitutional court to rule on the legitimacy of this new bailout fund. But the problem with the new bailout fund is they have no money. And they have, they just agreed to a hundred billion euro bailout of Spain. And the day after that signed, they're told they need another 400 billion for Spain. Not only that, but the Spanish uh, president said they would not accept austerity demands for a bailout. And then he signed austerity demands and he said, look, we're not free. We don't have any choice in this. Now, the other shoe that's set to drop is Italy, which is twice as large as Spain in terms of its outstanding uh, bank debt. Now, the point that has to be made on this is that the bank debt is three to four times in the short term larger than sovereign debt. And so when people say it's the Spanish government, it's the Italian government, it's the Greek government, that's just not true. It's the banks that need the bailout, not the governments. Governments that are in debt can always figure out ways to get out of debt if they're sovereign. They can generate internal credit to start producing and put people to work and, and open up new industries and, and have innovations and change. But if the sovereign nation loses its sovereignty and then it becomes nothing but an ATM machine to uh, print money in its name to go to its banks, then that nation will never survive. So one of the things we're looking at is this meltdown in Europe. Will, will it come from Greece? Will it come from Spain? Will it come from Italy? Will it come from the whole thing? Now, secondly, as you pointed out, we have back on the front burner, as of a week ago, the whole Middle East up to and including Russia because of the decision made by a certain grouping in London that's beginning to, to lose its grip. They're basically saying if we have to blow the whole thing up, we will because we're not going to allow ourselves to be defeated. And so you have an epic struggle underway between different financial factions, some factions in finance that want to survive, whereas others are saying, uh, après nous le deluge, if we can't survive, bring on the flood. Yeah, that sounds like a, uh, uh, you know, in other words, a hold, the, hold the mast while the ship goes down. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, basically saying in order to keep people fighting, puncture the lifeboats so there's no way off the ship. You have to fight. Well, well there's, a, there's even some people, as you say, the rats, last week we mentioned this, that when the push comes to shove, they want to survive. So they're even pushing for Glass-Steagall, even though it in a sense will bring down the British Empire because it's built on a house of cards. The fact is that even if the German government allowed the funding of the European Central Bank, the stock market's been gyrating and crashing the last few days with the dollar rising relatively because Europe is in such a bad state. Spain cannot renegotiate its debt. They pretended it was fixed several years ago, but there's, there's not just two problems it's like Valencia and other problems, but multiple problems. I think up to six major provinces that are going well, yeah, but bankrupt. The biggest problem is that they had a real estate.
state bubble on par, on par with the United States. And right. the British banks, the German banks, and the Spanish banks went whole hog with the, the real estate bubble in right. Spain. Uh, there was also a real estate bubble in Britain, which was based on such projects as Canary Wharf. It was right. based on office, uh, building office space in London that was never used, luxury homes that were never purchased. And so you have this real estate bubble that still has not fully popped in Spain, but we have almost 30% official unemployment in Spain, and in Greece, close to 26%. Right. And so there's no way these countries can get out of it. But I think the important point that, that you made just before about the rats, there are some bankers, including some top people connected to well-known companies like Hambro's, Rothschild, the Financial Times newspaper, who basically said, look, this whole system's going to blow up. We can't let that happen, so let's agree to go with Glass-Steagall in the short term, and we'll sort things out in the long term. They're right. in a war right now with those forces in Great Britain, in the, in the city of London, which are saying no surrender, and the leader of the no surrender forces is none other than that dirtbag Tony Blair, who yesterday in a speech came out and, and said that the British government cannot turn back the reforms of Margaret Thatcher. So here you have the so-called socialist Labour Prime Minister saying that the Labour Party has to uh, fight for the Thatcherite deregulation, the so-called Big Bang in the 1980s, which led to the crisis in the first place. Now, one irony on that. The Chancellor of the Exchequer, that is the equivalent of the Ministry of the Treasury, in Britain during Thatcher's deregulation period is a man named Lord Nigel Lawson, who is one of the leading promoters of deregulation in the 1980s. He is now a leading force fighting for Glass-Steagall, saying that this policy made, was a mistake and it went too far. So internationally, there is a vocal fight over Glass-Steagall. In the United States, it's being suppressed because the media is still enslaved to an Obama-Romney race between two zeros, two losers, who would destroy this country. Either one of them would. And that's why LaRouche made the decision. We're going to go all out in Washington these last two weeks of the congressional session before the summer recess to try to get the Glass-Steagall and the WAPA 21 and credit policy on the agenda of the Congress immediately before the recess so that it will, it will affect the Democratic Convention in September. Right. Now, this has to happen pretty quickly. The window is basically, I think, two weeks maximum, isn't it? Well, the window for this is two weeks. The window for the monetary system is probably up through September uh, because if you don't have some changes by then and this new European stability mechanism is allowed by the German Constitutional Court, you're going to have a hyperinflationary blowout of Europe. So instead of just having a domino collapse, you'll have an explosion of the whole system in Europe. Exactly. Uh, it means basically it's moving into what I call the October surprise window. So we, we also have the wild card of the, the war game going on in Japan. I'm not sure if you're aware of it, but since um, Monday... They've had a major war game going on in Tokyo, yeah. and they've also predicted that within four years there'll be a large enough earthquake they'll have to evacuate Tokyo. That's the U.S. government saying this. So when they'll admit that much, knowing that literally any kind of radiation release from even a level 7 earthquake, which is likely to happen within three to six months, we're basically seeing a war game that may go live any day. And uh, when we come back, much more, many more issues to discuss. You better, better be prepared. We're, again, this is a hard facts day. The time to get ready for what's coming. Welcome 
Welcome back. And, uh, Harley, we talked about uh, the Aurora thing while we're on the break. Um, we've got kind of two major parts here, problems here. The first part is, and I've got a, a presentation. I'm working on a, a series of white papers on virtually each of the, whether it's financial, these other issues, but on the gun issue. And here's my solution. But, uh, we could do this. We, maybe we could pick that up in the third segment. Because I yeah, I want to pick it up in the third, but I want to start with. We'll do that, yeah. But what yeah. I want to do is I want to pick this up a little later, but I think it's important for people to understand we need to have solutions like LaRouche does for the financial problems. And if we don't move on these relatively quickly, we're not going to have any time left. So let's please continue. Yeah, that's, that's the, exactly the point. So um, if you look at the crisis, the war drive, the fact that the president is talking about weapons in, in, in Syria which have to be contained. The Israelis are talking about going in and taking over these weapons and so they don't get into the wrong hands and so on. You actually have an active military plan that's on the books for the U.S. and Israel. And the Russians are warning, don't do it. At the same time, you have the meltdown of the financial system in Europe, the fact that there's an acknowledged Second, you know, they don't say double dip, but the reality is we never got out of the crisis in the first place in the United States. Well, the structural problems that caused it have not been fixed. Not it's almost like a patient that's had. That's like a patient to the decision yeah. LaRouche made this week to try yeah. to use these last two weeks of the congressional session to bring about a dramatic shift from the Congress. Now, a lot of people are skeptical about this, including a lot of our own members who have watched, the, you know, there's 77 signers so far of the Marcy Captor H.R. 1489, which would restore Glass-Steagall. And they're all saying, well, there's not enough support to get it uh, moved in, onto the floor. One person can move a bill onto the floor. There's more than enough support. There's a terror drive that comes from Obama that says to the Democrats, don't cross me on this. I won't let you do it. So we're going in and basically saying to the, the Democrats and the Republicans who are already signers, but to everyone else in the Congress as well, buddy, if we don't get Glass-Steagall and we don't get Obama out, and then we don't have a plan once we get Glass-Steagall to rebuild the country, you're finished. This country's finished. So you'd better do the right thing now. Stop waiting for the right moment. The right moment will not come uh, if you're waiting for it. You create the right moment. Right. So we have 40 to 50 young people in the halls of Congress going to the congressional watering holes at night, the bars, the Georgetown University area, the uh, hangouts, the lobbyist centers, the executive office building. And we had a number of discussions yesterday with people in the Obama administration who were freaked out when they first came out and saw our picture, a six-foot-high picture of Obama with a Hitler mustache. But then when they talked to us, they said, look, we have some disagreements with the president also. And we said, these are not disagreements. These are life-and-death matters. This guy's a killer. This guy, the, the consoler-in-chief, goes to Aurora to console the victims while he's launching drones killing civilians in Pakistan, Yemen, uh, Afghanistan and elsewhere. And by the way, the, uh, some of these drone killings are, and all bystanders for these drone killings that die, are American citizens. So there's actual lawsuits against the U.S. Department of Justice and the President for drone killings where American citizens didn't have due process and they killed them. Well, and the President argues that due process is what he decides. Therefore, you don't, you're not entitled. So to remember the statement by remember the statement by George Bush that he was going to be the decider. Actually, yeah. he was wrong. It was the next president in chief. You know, it was actually the decider was coming. In other words, it was like a prophetic uh, thing. You know, he was like John the Baptist, and now the Antichrist <laughs> himself is there, well, and he, the he, decider he, he, has I'm arrived. To saddle John the Baptist with the image of George W. Bush. But no, case, I, I'm, just, I'm being very sarcastic here. No, course, I, you know. I know. But, yeah, but, but, uh, but it's, 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 it's kind of like a, sometimes hyperbole kind of just shows you just how out of the box crazy uh, Obama is. No, the, the situation is totally crazy because you have, besides the drone killings, you have a president whose treasury secretary was aware of the fact that on 800 to 900 trillion dollars worth of financial assets, that the interest rates which determine the value of those assets were being rigged by a handful of large banks. And even with their rigging, they couldn't make money. Here's the irony. These banks control everything. 
and they were still going bankrupt. And so then what they do is they, they rigged the game so they couldn't lose, and they still needed bailouts. Look at Barclays. Barclays Bank has already testified and agreed to a $450 million fine that they rigged the interest rates. Barclays got $865 billion in, in bailout funds from the Federal Reserve and the uh, Treasury Department. So the President of the United States and Tim Geithner presided over the biggest theft in world history, even bigger than anything that Bush and Cheney could come up with. And now they're saying, well, we tried, we sent out a memo, the Republicans stood in our way. The Republicans didn't stand in their way. Obama was on the side of Wall Street from the beginning. Now, the second point that's involved in this is that they stuck every single, or not every single, but most cities and state governments with something called credit default swaps, interest rate insurance. And so the financial firms were selling these default swaps to cities that had borrowed money from banks at, at floating interest rates. And the default swaps would go into effect if the interest rates uh, went up. In other words, the investment banks would pay the cities in case the rates went up. But the investment banks knew that the rates would stay low because they were being rigged. And so cities and states have had to pay out billions of dollars to these interest rate swaps that they've taken away from police and fire protection, ambulance service, health care, education, and so on, maintenance of infrastructure. And so people have died as a result of this corruption. Right, so let me summarize what you said. What you're saying is LIBOR and the scheme between Geithner and Obama and these other yahoos has resulted in credit default swaps sold to states that caused them to cut down on services that caused austerity, fascism, cutback in firefighters, EMTs, and hospital services that That's resulted right. in the death of individuals. Exactly. Now, under the Nuremberg Tribunal, the code that was drafted to punish the Nazis at the end of World War II, they had... Uh, a, a principle called known or should have known that the, the, the Nazis knew or should have known that the effects of their policies were killing people. Now that was established as international law by the tribunal at Nuremberg and under those principles Obama is guilty on two counts. One is protection of banks that are carrying out this fraud that's causing governments to have to kill people. Right. And two, the launching of wars without going to the U.S. Congress for authorization. Exactly. In other words, we have all of the chambers loaded to impeach Obama, to remove Geithner, and to put an end to this regime that's marching us to World War III and world economic collapse, depression, and a collapse in the Middle Eastern peace. Turn to this issue about uh, the Aurora thing because it keeps on coming back. And, and one of the things that I often hear criticisms is people say, "Oh, uh, Linda Larouche is a closet communist." Look, uh, solutions come from the left, the right, the bottom, the top. The solutions come from common sense. Uh, for example, we we should be able to afford in America universal health care at reasonable cost, but we don't need to have big government or big insurance companies. We need to have a credit system so small business can get credit. We see both sides, both Obama and the Republicans, going to crush small business. We see credit contracting in Europe while well, the debt is increasing like a, 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 a like a ballooning. We uh, well, see, yeah, for example... Exactly. The debt is growing in Europe faster than the bailouts can cover it. Exactly. That's why now, it's moving toward hyperinflation. And, and what happens is the intergrocking world debt uh, scared off the Russians and Chinese because they tried to literally, the Europeans and British tried to, to see if they could force Kudrev and Russia and the Chinese to buy into this in trillions of dollars of bad debt uh, to quote, shore up the system so they would get a better position than the table to decide what the new world economy would be. What's going on in America is, in Britain, is their solution if things kind of fly apart is to start a world war. Now, that means well, billions of people dead. The important thing now, and, and this is now I'm talking directly to your listeners. 
we have an opportunity that has just, in a sense, fallen into our lap because a section of very powerful people who used to oppose us, who used to slander LaRouche, you know, the, the Rothschild networks were the ones who said LaRouche should never get a fair break in the United States. They were the ones who, who put him in prison. LaRouche spent five years in federal prison where they tried to break him. Now, these networks are basically saying, look, this chap LaRouche, we got to go with him right now. Let's just not make sure that, let's make sure he doesn't have too much power. Now, the issue here is not LaRouche per se, but the leadership of the American people to do what's right. As I mentioned to you on the break, one of the big stories now is this story about Hong Kong Shanghai Bank Corporation. You know, people are focused legitimately on Fast and Furious because it was a scam, it was a fraud, there were at least two Americans killed because of this. But how many Americans have died from drug overdoses, from drug wars, from the, the effects, how many lives have been destroyed by drugs, and now we find something that, of course, we already knew, but the documentation is in front of the U.S. Senate that shows that Hong Kong Shanghai Bank was laundering hundreds of billions of dollars of drug money. Secondly, that some of that drug money was ending up in banks that were under the control of the Saudis that funded the 9-11 terrorists. That some of that drug money through George Soros ended up in the campaign coffers of Senator Barack Obama in 2008 and enabled him to buy enough people to go in and flood the caucus states so he could steal the Democratic nomination. Isn't that amazing? And it's funny how I call him the $2 billion man. Just like Lee Majors, the $6 million man that was bionic. He's the $2 billion man bought by George Soros and the Rothschild Banks. And, and he's now, their functionary. This is now in a document that was produced in the U.S. Senate by Senator Carl Levin, who's a liberal Democrat from Michigan, and Senator Tom Coburn, who's a doctor, who's a conservative Republican from Oklahoma. Now, what this means is that this section of the British oligarchy that's been fighting to destroy America, that was using drugs to destroy America. Don't forget, this is the same faction who was laundering the drug money for the Taliban from the opium traffic out of Afghanistan. This bank has been forced to acknowledge that they were doing this. Now, on the LaRouche side, let me just tell your listeners this. In 1978, we published a book called Dope Incorporated. It went through three <laughs> editions. The third one was called uh, uh, The Book That Drove Henry Kissinger Crazy. But on the cover, it had the Union Jack and a hypodermic needle. And what we said is that banks directly under the power of the British monarchy were running a half a trillion dollar a year drug money laundering business. Now, it's much bigger than that now. Oh, yeah, and now it's around a trillion and a half to two trillion dollars a year at least. And that led to the slander against LaRouche that, oh, how can you believe LaRouche? He says the Queen of England pushes drugs. Well, the fact of the matter is that the Queen's personal bank called Coots and Company was fined by the British for laundering drug money. The Queen's personal bank. Right. And Hong Kong Shanghai Bank was chartered by the British government in 1862 to launder the proceeds of the drug trafficking out of China in Hong Kong right. uh, after the British fleet was sent for the second time to force the Chinese to accept the shipment of Indian opium into China. And by the way, the Hong Kong still operates as a go-between with the communist state, which is also put forward by the British. Mao Zedong could not have gone into power without British support. That's absolutely true. And now, here's the thing that I would I'd say to people. If you want to win this fight, we now have the evidence that the bankers or the banksters, the corrupt, speculative bloodsuckers who took over the U.S. government, who took over the governments of Europe, have been caught with evidentiary uh, documents showing they were laundering drugs, they were manipulating the interest rates, they were stealing through the way they ran the mortgage business, and it was all covered up by Tim Geithner 
and by President Barack Obama. Yeah, they tried to pretend that they were just kind of aware of the problem. No, they had a number of committee meetings with even transcripts that show that Geithner was fully aware. And I can't believe how he tries to pretend he's like from the uh, Charles Dickens, Limmy, little Timmy Geithner. No, Timmy he's Geithner. Worse than that. He's saying, I'm a hero because I exposed this in the memo. But in his memo, he basically said we should do something, and then he never did anything. So the memo right. actually exposes the fact that he allowed this to continue, and then he bailed out the very banks that did this. Well, what happened is, while they bailed out the banks, the credit for every nation is contracted. So we have uh, two major provinces in Spain, Valencia, and another province. German and the Europeans do not have enough money, even if they wanted to, to bail out Europe. Europe is toast now. Unless uh, things are turned around in the next couple of months before the end of September, Europe will be in complete disarray this fall. We're talking about what I called a, and this idea of a federated Europe, unless they have a new treaty. Well, that's, that's never going to work, but this yeah. is why these next two weeks are so important. Because we, if we could force a vote on Glass-Steagall and it passed, Obama would veto it. And then the Democratic Party would have to say, this guy has to go. And so I'm appealing to your audience today to get on the phone and mobilize the Congress. It, go on our website, LaRouchePack.com, get the evidence. Call our office if you want to coordinate with people in your district. That number is 800-922-2907. 800-922-2907. Two nine zero seven, and we'll give it again before the end of the show. But do something. This next two week period is critical. The Congress. Look, we we had young people in the Congress. Have congressmen come up to them and say, "I've been following you on Glass Steagall. Now I realize how important it is. And is this the right way for me to put it?" We had one Senate office, a U.S. Senate office, say. We agree with you on Glass-Steagall, but this national credit issue, that's what I'm really interested in. How does this work? So these are congressional offices going into election who know they have no solutions and they know the crisis is profound, and some of them are starting to respond. We need a fire lit under their butts all over the country. Yeah, exactly. In fact, it's at the point now where unless these congressional offices move, they also have to start putting forward better candidates. Uh, we're also going to see a disaster, I think, in the Republican convention that's coming up because I don't see the support, for example, for Romney is a mile wide and a millimeter deep. Uh, that's you know, credit, I think. <laughs> yeah, 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 and maybe it's only a micron deep, but it, yeah, you know, but... <laughs> that's more likely. Uh, we're likely to see a very interesting convention. Back in a moment, the Harley Schlanger. Welcome back, and uh, just to run through some of the top stories that we've got links up uh, today to go to the LaRouche Foundation, that's LaRouchePAC.com, LaRouchePUB.com. The phone number to call again if they want to get in touch and get an action plan as to what to do, and it needs to be done now. We only have a couple weeks to remove Obama and Geithner. If we don't, we're almost certainly heading toward military action in the air over Syria within most likely an S-300 or S-400 system. We will have intervention by Russia and China. We will have a shutdown of the Strait of Hormuz. We will be heading toward World War. <coughs> the only thing <coughs> to maybe avert that, at least temporarily, is a false peace treaty, which I see coming, partitioning the state of Israel, which isn't going to fix the problem. The problem with Islam, the problem with the world economy, is not going to fix it by, by what I call castrating Israel. That's not going to fix this issue. Uh, we have a situation where the Middle East will become even more unstable if Syria falls. More guaranteed that there will be a planned attack against Iran, which will be absolutely Actually, guaranteed. You know, if you look at the situation with Syria, look what happened in Iraq two days ago. 160 people killed by Sunni bombs against Shiites. Now, the Sunni radicals, who are the ones challenging Syria and Iraq, right. are known as the Salafi brand of, of Islam, which is funded by the Saudis. Right. And the, well, the Saudis funded. are the extremists who just appointed last week Prince Bondar to be the head of Saudi intelligence. Bondar, Bondar Bush? 
<laughs> Bunder Bush. Bush. <laughs> we call Bunder Bush. George yeah. W. Bush for many years, yeah. ambassador to the United States, and one of the authors of 9-11. Oh. And so what a, what he is a... now our leading ally in Saudi Arabia. The Obama administration is teaming up with the Saudis and with Al-Qaeda to try to overthrow Assad. And, you know, if the Israelis think that this is going to make the Middle East more safe, Netanyahu is more crazy than I thought he was. So we're oh, dealing with things that are out of control. But to get back to the point, Obama is not uh, protected. The protection of him was the threat that, that if you moved against him, you'd be considered racist. You know, at this point, there's so, we've gone I, so I think it's getting out of that. Yeah, it's well worn now. I, I think that people don't buy that anymore. No, it's, we've gone so far beyond that. Now, secondly, Romney's not the solution. No. We're not, LaRouche is not saying we have to get rid of Obama and bring in Romney. We're saying Romney's the same thing as Obama, but... You know, maybe he didn't get the same teleprompters that they gave Obama. But <laughs> yeah, you're not going to yeah. solve a problem with a Mitt Romney in there. The solution yeah. is to get the Democratic Party to recognize that they have to dump Obama, go with Glass-Steagall, go with a credit policy, and go with a driver approach to science and technology such as the NAWAPA project, North American Water and Power Alliance, so you can create four to six million jobs immediately in industry, in technology, that will have more spin-offs beyond that. If we were to do that, Obama would come out against it and would discredit himself, and that's why we're sending 40 people a day, yesterday, today, tomorrow, and the three days Congress is in session next week, to put the squeeze on the Congress. Now, we're doing that in Washington, D.C., your listeners can do that in their districts, in their home districts. Go on our website, get the names of these bills, the uh, the uh, H.R. 1489, which is to restore Glass-Steagall. That's already got 77 sponsors. It should but have enough to finish before the... Uh, to call their Congress, congressional office and say, support this. It, it should be enough, actually, to finally get this bill passed before the summer session's over and before we move into lame duck uh, government. And then Obama will try to veto it because he's with, the, he's with the crazies in London. And under those circumstances, maybe there'll be signals sent from London to some of the Democrats saying, look, you've given him a chance, he's failed, let's get him out of there, go to Charlotte, North Carolina for the Democratic Convention with a clean slate. And as LaRouche said, people say to LaRouche, well, who's going to replace Obama? He said, it doesn't matter if you have the right policy, whoever the Democrats choose will have to go with that policy. Right, it was not just the Democrats. The Republicans need to smarten up. We have uh, the Republicans not getting it straight either. No, uh, not they're, at all. They're, allowing, they're allowing the ultra-wealthy to get away with not paying taxes. I had a gentleman on the other day, and we talked about this. It's quite Phil Brolic, and he t- his website is taxtherich.name. And I said, well, who's going to be taxed? He said, anybody that makes more than me. I said, which me are you talking about? I said, the fact is you have to have credit for small business. 75 to 80% of all jobs are created by small business. If you're not making quarter million a year as a small business, you're at your kitchen table. You're not a small business. And all the creativity doesn't occur in large you know, transnational corporations. They are the pirates. They kind of rip and tear and gobble up other companies. But you see, this is how something like <laughs> Nawapa works, because what you're dealing with is in the short term this idea of massive amounts of water transfer from wasted water in, in Alaska and Canada down through the western United States. But you need to build the infrastructure to carry it. You need right. the cities that will uh, support the infrastructure. So you're talking about creating the skilled jobs Right. It will require many, well, many contractors who will be able to submit well, competitive bids. Our problem is going to be in the short term. We don't have enough skilled workers. Well, here, here's a story that. that I know you'll appreciate. Yeah. Uh, Cody Jones, who you know, was at a conference yesterday on the future of deep space. And right. one of the presenters was a 70-something-year-old guy who worked on the Mars mission under Kennedy that was still operative until the 1970s. That is, John Kennedy wanted us to have a, a, a base on Mars by 1984. 
What this guy said is that we were talking then about nuclear rockets, and he said there's not a single scientist alive who was part of that program then. There's nobody who knows how to do this. We're going to have to relearn it. Now, this is a problem we're facing throughout our economy, and if we don't reverse this, then there's no way we're going to see the, 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 the country survive another few years. So the, the fight this next two weeks to get Obama out, go after Geithner. Geithner's a weak link. So is Eric Holder. Go after the two of them, but force through Glass-Steagall based on the fact that we're going to end the bailouts with Glass-Steagall. That's what Glass-Steagall does. It ends the bailouts. Yeah. It makes the banks eat their bad debt. And then we can start generating new credit to rebuild the country. And I need your listeners to call their congressmen to give up their cynicism, at least for this next two weeks. Call your congressman and pressure him. Get your friends and neighbors to do it, your wife, your husband, your kids, your grandparents. Get a mobilization going so that we can steamroll the Congress to do what's right for yeah. change and bring yeah. the government back to the side of the people. Well, we know there's a solution for every every problem. And for example, my solution for the gun problem, and I'll capsulize it in 30 seconds, the county sheriff should have a registry that's not statewide or government. And if you go through a, uh, everybody should go through a basic questionnaire. If it's tweaked, you need to go to a professional that will then do a proper evaluation of it before you get any gun. And if you do get any gun, you can get any gun you want, as long as you're not crazy. Now, this young man, just like the Cleveland and Harris of uh, Columbine, would have set off all kinds of red flags, and they would have never had these guns. You never have guns unless you're properly you certified. Know, we should that, apply the same principle to the president, who's clearly crazy, and yet right. he's been given drones and other sophisticated weapon systems right. to play with. Right, exactly. If I, I could make up 30 questions, putting on my, what we would call, Israeli security hat, and just figuring out what questions I'd ask, and counting the beads of sweat on the forehead of those who want to get guns for nefarious reasons. Rational, good American people should be integrated so that the county sheriff can say, you can call up at a moment's notice. You, just like in Switzerland, you'd spend a weekend, say a month, or every two months with a county sheriff. You'd have proper gun clubs come out of it. You'd have be able to pull up a posse or actually deputize people if need be if there's a national disaster. You'd have them also getting involved with the uh, CERT program with the local uh, volunteer fire departments. Well, to so that we would things, and just because we're almost out of time, We've got to get Obama out in the next two weeks, and we've got to get a sound economic policy. And I'll give out our number again because yes, I want people to call that. and get in this fight. It's 800-922-2907. I pay for the call. You don't have to. It's a toll-free call. 800-922-2907. I think there's time... Oh. Is there's time for us to accomplish this, isn't, isn't it? Right. Uh, and invest a little bit of time in this. This is the future of our country that's at stake. If, if we can push these bills through the Congress now, I know uh, Daryl Issa, who lives literally on the hill over that we can see from our home, literally, believe it or not, his helicopter comes and goes from Vista. They need to put in financial policies in now that will preserve America so we don't have the Hunger Games in 10 years if there still is a continental United States. Considering what's going on. Amazing times we live in. It is a fight worth fighting. It's a, uh, it's a time that is now ours. The battle is ours. I'll talk to you next week. 800-922-2907 to get more info. Back, hour two, hour three coming up. Yep.